skin? Or tri-suit? Which one is better? Which is faster? We are going to find out. temperature is around 26 degrees Celsius or 78 degrees Fahrenheit and for that reason wetsuits are prohibited and here in Nice well we're filming this prior to the Ironman World Championships but it's very likely that the pros will also be non-wetsuit and the age group as well it's going to be borderline yeah it is well recently we saw Lucy Charles Barkley at the PTO Asian Open beaten out of the water by Sarah Paracella now that is quite extraordinary in itself not we've never seen Lucy beaten out of the water but most notably Tala was not wearing a swim skin, and Lucy was. Yeah, we also recently saw Jan Frodeno at the PTO US Open forget to remove his swim skin until the mountain line. Now, Ironman rules do state that you can wear a swim skin over your tri suit during the swim leg, but should you? Yeah, I mean, is it worth spending, say, around £300 or $400 to save just a few seconds? Well, we are going to find out. We're going to cover the differences and the options that you've got, and then we're going to test it out and measure the difference. So what is a swim skin and why is it different? Well, first, I think we should take a look at the Ironman rules. Now they state when wetsuits are prohibited, you can't wear any clothing of any sort below the knee or elbow. You may wear a covering over your textile race suit, but it must be 100% textile, contain no rubberized material, such as neoprene, and provide no buoyancy. Your swimwear may extend to, but not past, your elbows and knees. So within these rules, several brands have created swim skins. These are designed to be worn over the top of your tri suit. And the idea being they add an amount of compression and they reduce drag with the hydrophobic material. And basically this allows you to swim faster on that swim leg. Now, some like the one I'm wearing come down to the elbow, but the majority end at the shoulders, come down to the knees. And remember, they are designed to be removed in T1. Now, before we go on, let's answer Probably your first question, why not just swim in your tri suit or do the entire race in your swim skin? Well, you want to be comfortable during the race in your tri suit or the suit that you plan to race in and a tight swim skin just is not going to be that, particularly later on in the race and particularly so on the run. But then your not quite so tight tri suit is going to be less efficient in the water but then your tight swim skin with its hydrophobic coating that makes it slippery in the water is not going to be anywhere near as breathable and therefore it's going to be incredibly hot and uncomfortable later in the day. Again, particularly on the run. So the million dollar question, or should I say $400 question, is how much do they save? Well, we are about to test it, but it's just worth bearing in mind that obviously swim skin does have to be removed in T1, so you need to allow for that little bit of extra time. However, they tend to come off much more easily than a wetsuit at least. Yeah, so we're not gonna be doing a full 3.8 kilometer swim test here. Far too many variables in that one, so let's cut it down to 200 meters. So Heather, what do you reckon round? Should we go round the GTN Super Yacht yeah, and back on. in? Yeah, no, not really. We're just going to go around the yellow boy back in. We're not going to do a T1 because they actually have very rocky beaches here in Nice and our feet won't thank us very much for that. So should we do it? Okay. Let's go. Three, two, one, go! Yeah, I've got a little confession to make. I forgot my swim skin. So yeah, Heather is going to be doing this test on her own. She doesn't realize this yet. Uh, but this is an important point, actually, because a lot of people turn up to triathlons, particularly those triathlons that are potentially going to be non-wetsuit, unprepared, without a swim skin. And then they spend the day or two prior to the event running around trying to find and purchase a swim skin, which is incredibly stressful. And also, you miss out on good deals. So be more Heather and less Mark. Go prepared. I'm not going to lie. 
feel quite guilty. But anyway, I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk through what Heather is actually doing these tests in right now. So she started off in the GTN tri-suit, as I'm wearing right now, which is from Surpass. She's then going to do the next test wearing an Orca RS1 swim skin over the top of that. She's actually particularly using the sleeved one, so it covers the arms as well. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that all tri-suits are made slightly differently. They all have slightly different fits and use slightly different materials. So some will swim faster than others. But if you are thinking about upgrading your tri-suit with the swim leg in mind, because perhaps you're doing a triathlon that is potentially going to be non-wetsuit legal, then your money may be better off spent on the swim skin rather than a new tri-suit. But we're hoping we might verify that shortly. It's also worth pointing out that the fit of a swim skin, much like with a wetsuit, can make all the difference too. An ill-fitting swim skin can drastically slow you down despite all its hydrodynamic properties. In fact, if your swim skin is loose and ill-fitting and filling with water, well, those hydrodynamic properties will actually almost hold that water in as it goes in, so it will almost act like a parachute. You actually want to really squeeze into a swim skin. It should really squeeze you and hold you around the torso region, but equally be nice and flexible and a lot of movement around the shoulders. But don't go using that same logic for your tri-suit. I think you'll probably regret that when you get onto the run. So that's the tri-suit test over with now. Onto the swim skin. Alright, well Mark, thanks for your help on that one. Uh, yeah, I am Really sorry about that one. I mean, jokes aside, you missed out. It was absolutely beautiful in that water. But it does just mean that we've only got one set of times to deal with it. Oh, potentially a little bit slower, but we've got some numbers. Yeah, so what are they? Okay, I'm so, intrigued. yeah, well, I mean, nothing special, but my first swim in the tri suit was two minutes 50. And then obviously, once I had time, a bit of rest to recover, get changed into my swim skin, went again, and that was a 2.46. Oh, nice. So a two second difference. Per hundred? Oh, per hundred, per yes. Per hundred, yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not yeah. My math isn't that yeah. bad. Well, I have, um, I have just done some numbers and I'm just going to have to quickly look at those. So yeah, one, 125 per hundred for the um, tri-suit. So that would equate, if we extrapolated it up to 3.8K for an Ironman, um, that would equate to 53 minutes, 50. Um, and then the swim skin at 123 per hundred, like you said, two seconds quicker, equates at 52.34. And then the difference overall is... One minute 16. Yeah, exactly. So um, it does become you know, quite significant when you think if you thought over an hour of effort, that would be, say, on the bike, you're doing five, if you could say five minutes on the bike, for example, yeah. that ends up then being quite a considerable amount. Yeah, definitely. That's, um, that's quite a big savings. How did it feel then? Um, well, I'm glad you asked that because I don't swim in the swim skin very often. I mean, we don't, our waters are warm enough. Mm. So I do really like that feeling of the compression. And even though it doesn't have any buoyancy in, I somehow feel like I'm a tiny bit higher in the water, which must be psychological, but that is an element. I personally would probably go sleeveless. Um, this was the only suit that I had. Um, I just like to have a little bit more movement around my arms when I've got a tri suit on as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense that it was a bit quicker. and. If I was debating on spending some money, I might look. I think it's worth noting as well that yes, it's got three, four hundred dollars or pounds, but you can quite often find these on the second-hand market, yeah. and they don't they they last because people don't swim in them very often. So, I think in that with that in mind, it, it could well be worth the investment. Yeah, definitely. I, I probably agree. Have my experience wearing swim skins in the past. Um, yeah, I just. There is a big psychological boost in mm. putting it on, that compression feeling. Definitely around the torso, it almost holds you uh, better yeah, than you would ordinarily. Yeah, it's hard to explain, um, isn't And it? you can very much feel that so you're slipping through the water without that additional drag. I personally would always go for the sleeveless, okay, uh, but I do yeah. understand why some people may opt for the sleeve yeah, to I mean, cover if you, the... Yeah, if you've got a baggy yeah. tri-suit sleeve, then it holds and, them And in. you do see a lot of the pros, and I've done this in the past, is actually with these sort of tri-suits, I would unzip it, roll it down underneath the swim skin, um, so my, my arms are free and exposed yeah. and then when I come out I'd, I'd undo the swim skin and start putting the tri suit on as I'm running through transition. Tricky I know when it's wet um, but that is an yeah. option as well. I mean we have also seen even pros, seasoned pros, 
like the likes of Jan Pretty Day, mm -hmm. even forgetting to take your swim skin off. So you've got to make sure that you remember to take it off because it's not going to be very comfortable to, to cycle in for that many hours. But yeah. Um, well, yeah. an interesting uh, little experiment. I'm sorry yeah. I couldn't get involved, but thank you, Heather, That's for doing all right. that. My pleasure. Yeah. Well, I th hope you guys have enjoyed it, found it informative. If you have, please uh, give a video a like. Everyone in the comments section, let us know what you think to swim skin versus tri suit. And please subscribe too.